In Brockton, we swing for the fences so we can touch home. We coach in Brockton to instill the teamwork that builds a great winning tradition. We do business in Brockton because here, you can find a taste of home away from home. We keep our company in Brockton because we love this city. When Brockton is home, everything is within reach. Massachusetts. I'd like to thank District Attorney Cruz for inviting me here today to his announcement of Brockton's Project Safe Neighborhoods program, which is a collaborative effort between the DA's office here and the U.S. Department of Justice, one that comes with additional federal funding for law enforcement and for community outreach in this city. The U.S. Attorney's office values what is truly a long-standing relationship with this District Attorney's office here and we both share the same goal, which is, is to reduce violent crime in this city and to continue to improve the quality of life for the people who live and work here. For those who don't know, Project Safe Neighborhoods is a Justice Department program that was originally launched in 2001. It's proven to be an effective tool in helping communities to reduce violence using a combination of prosecutorial support for local authorities and federal funding for local anti-crime initiatives. Over the years, the department's funding support for PSN has waned, but the Attorney General uh, relaunched the program in October 2017 and pledged resources to help specific high crime areas like Brockton push back against gangs and drug trafficking in their neighborhoods. It's not a Washington-based program. The underlying point of the program is to provide flexibility to each locality that receives money so that they can best use the resources and funding for what they need in their neighborhoods. Brockton's one of the original PSN cities. Earlier this year, I committed three federal prosecutors, two of whom had previously worked in the district attorney's office here, to work with DA Cruz and his prosecutors to prosecute violent crime cases and assist in outreach in Brockton. Case by case, my prosecutors working with district attorney Cruz's office discuss whether particular offenders should be prosecuted by state authorities or federal authorities in an effort to figure out how to best deter crime going forward in this city. The PSN initiative in Brockton has already yielded concrete results. In August of this year, we engaged in a takedown in Brockton and some in Boston in which 29 people were arrested on federal and state drugs, firearm, and counterfeiting offenses. The operation targeted specific offenders who are most responsible for crime on Brockton streets, <clears throat> excuse me, and involved over 150 federal, state, and local uh, enforcement officers uh, in the arrests. Through the great work of law enforcement and the community and local service providers in this city, Brockton is now seeing statistically a downward trend in crime in this city, and mostly without resources that would normally be considered adequate for that effort. So we're eager to see what can be done with some actual financial support for the efforts being undertaken in this city. Funding that, for example, can go to additional assistant district attorneys, can go to overtime for police officers and other investigators, can go to out, uh, funding outreach in high schools or otherwise in the community. And so uh, my office, the U.S. Attorney's Office, is looking forward to continuing its collaborative approach with District Attorney uh, Cruz here. And with that, I'll hand things over to D.A. Cruz. Good morning. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank our U.S. Attorney, Andrew Elling. Uh, since being appointed last year, uh, U.S. Attorney Elling has been incredibly committed to the safety and the well-being of, of people here in the, Mass the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He has focused on eradicating gun violence 
and dealing with the deadly heroin and fentanyl drug markets and has improved the quality of life for many of our neighborhoods. And we've benefited from his success right here in the city of Brockton. I'm really excited to be here this morning. It is an honor to be one of the 14 sites uh, re nationally receiving Project Safe Neighborhood Grant Funding. This award is a testament to a lot of hard work that's done to the Safe Streets Coalition that's been up and running for the last three years. Through the years, Safe Streets has been involved in many representatives from our office, the State Police, the Brockton Police, the U.S. Attorney's Office, FBI, DEA, D uh, probation, parole, numerous community agencies, all working together. And although we have not always had funding, the collaboration of these numerous groups has always generated results. Prior to this year, the formal funding for our initial PSN ended in 2009. But thanks to the commitment and the hard work of the people behind me, we've been able to listen to the community, continue to share information, pool whatever resources that we have, and develop strategies to address violence here in the city of Brockton. And we have produced results. For instance, in 2016, we did not have one single homicide due to street violence here in the city of Brockton or in the county of Plymouth. This perseverance, therefore, has paid off. When we became a PSN-funded site, so we joined Chicago, Seattle, Puerto Rico, and numerous other sites across America that are going to implement and continue to work together the PSN gun violence reduction strategies. Safe Streets has always been and continues to be a team effort. And I would like to acknowledge some of the people that are here today for, uh, that are on our Safe Streets team and say thank you to, uh, one, the Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety, EOPS. I want to thank Mayor Bill Carpenter and Brockton Police Chief John Crowley, who stand behind me. Lieutenant Colonel Chris Mason from the Mass State Police. Andrea Burton from the Mayor's Office. Brockton District Court Chief of Probation Mike Branch. Reverend Mark Oliver of the Trinity Baptist Church. Sylvester Forts and Jim Frazier from the Plymouth County Sheriff's Reentry Department. Melinda Nealon from the Family Center, Tracy Hillman from Choices Between Mentoring Program, and my friend Dennis Carmen from the United Way. And I'd also like to thank Kelly Research Group. Uh, they could not be with us today, but they've been an integral partner for us, for our office, for our Safe Streets Coalition. Having them as our data collection uh, increases our capacity to make sure that we continue to have the data that we need to commit to the best practices that are out there. In addition, I'd also like to thank Sheriff Joe McDonald, who can't be here today, uh, but he has been with us from the beginning. Back in 2015, Sheriff McDonald and myself started the Plymouth County Drug Abuse Task Force, uh, which we created to enhance the capacity of our county in addressing the opioid issues. The task force was instrumental in helping us understand the connection between the emerging heroin fentanyl markets and the corresponding gun violence. Unfortunately, since 2010, the demand for opioids in Brockton has only increased as folks from surrounding communities venture into this city. In 2016, nearly half of the overdoses at Signature Oak Hospital in Brockton were residents not from Brockton. As Brockton attracted more drug purchases, more individuals were becoming involved in the heroin and fentanyl distribution. This attracts gun violence as sellers try to protect their share of the market. Heroin incidents between 2010 and 2015 increased 171%. And this coincided with a 50% increase in firearm discharge incidents during the same time period. So Safe Street takes a holistic approach to reduce gun violence in Brockton. The pillars are prevention, enforcement, and reentry. Together with our partners here today, we're dedicated to prevention, including getting upstream and creating trauma-sensitive schools to help kids who are traumatized to learn and succeed and stop the, the cycles of drugs here in the city. Partnering with mentoring programs like Choice for Teens, working with our faith-based community, and utilizing our diversion programs when appropriate to decrease youth exposure to the criminal justice system. We are dedicated to reentry services. As I said earlier, Jim and Sylvester here do an outstanding job at the House of Correction preparing to have those incarcerated to have a network of supports when they re-enter our community. Just a few weeks ago, myself, uh, the mayor, uh, and Sheriff McDonald sponsored a Corey Job Friendly Fair. 
Jim held a resume writing workshop prior to that, and Sylvester, year after year, organizes reentry panels for those incarcerated to connect with social services here in Brockton. And finally, we are dedicated to enforcement. We will not tolerate gun violence, period. And the PSN grant provides us with the opportunity to increase our capacity to hold people accountable for pulling triggers in our neighborhoods. Our latest data shows that 28 people have been shot in the city of Brockton this year with six street violence fatalities. Including these numbers, there have been 113 people shot here since 2015. That's 113 victims. That's 113 families. 113 times a neighborhood has been rattled by violence. 113 times kids have been either awake by gun violence or they've seen someone hit by peering out their windows or they've just seen the police tape in the area. Our numbers indicate that we completed a gun violence analysis last year where they found over a two year period, 74% of our incidents where someone was shot by gunfire happened in a public place. This is concerning on multiple levels, including the risk of bystanders being hit, as well as the visibility of gun violence uh, in our neighborhoods. Who is watching? Who is witnessing? What impact is this having on our kids? The tentacles of gun violence are long, and they extend far into the neighborhood, leaving families to deal with the resulting trauma. And it will not be tolerated. Those perpetrating gun violence will be held accountable. The PSN grant will allow us to implement the Boston ceasefire model. Ceasefire is long been recognized by the Department of Justice as a best practice, and the hallmark of ceasefire is focused deterrence, identifying those responsible for the gun activity in the city offering opportunities for intervention, but also being very clear what the rules are. Stop shooting. And if the rules are broken, using all aspects of the criminal justice system to hold offenders accountable. And like the USA said, we will be dealing directly with the United States Attorney's Office and also our prosecutors down here to make sure that we can do what we can to see what area is applicable for the individuals who are committing crimes here in the city of Brockton. So, I want to thank U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling again. I want to thank you to our Safe Street partners for your continued commitment to the city of Brockton. This is a great opportunity to pump resources into the city, maintain existing partnerships, infuse new ones, and build a gun violence prevention framework that will work and that will last. We have done it before, and I am confident that we're going to do it again. So thank you for coming today, and I'd like to ask Mayor Carpenter if he could also just say a couple of words. Well, first, I'd like to welcome uh, U.S. Attorney Leland here to the city of Brockton and, and just express how much we appreciate the support that we get from the U.S. Attorney's Office and from the Department of Justice and how critical the funding is that uh, has been brought to support the efforts. Um, there's no question that this Project Safe Neighborhood model is a model that's working here. Um, it's, it's a model that's built around collaboration between local, state, county, federal, uh, law enforcement authorities all working together, uh, sharing intelligence, sharing resources, identifying targets of mutual interest, uh, and it, it has allowed us to really identify uh, repeat violent offenders and make them the focus to get them off the streets. And I think the recent sweep that the U.S. Attorney uh, described uh, was a perfect example of it. A number of dangerous individuals were swept off the streets of the city uh, as the result of that investigation. Um, there's no questioning the, the impact of the opioid crisis here, not just in Brockton, but regionally and nationally. Um, there's no doubt as we take on these challenges of gun violence and all of the impacts of opioid addiction that what you see happening now is a combining of the strategies on both. You can't look at one without looking at the other. Um, guns are tri tied to the illicit drug trade. A large percentage of uh, gun violence incidents involve drug transactions. Um, and so I think what you're seeing today is we're evolving into a model where we are compassionately doing outreach and trying to help people. Um, I think the Plymouth County outreach, uh, where we're working with the DA and the sheriff, um, doing follow-up visits uh, to overdose victims, uh, trying to connect with services is a great example of that. Our champion plan here in the city, our version of police-assisted recovery, 
um, that allows any individual to just walk into the police station and ask for help, and we're getting those folks into treatment within two hours or less. Uh, in two and a half years, we've assisted over a thousand people in being admitted into uh, drug treatment programs. Uh, so that we are certainly going after reducing the supply by compassionately helping people that are struggling with addiction and helping to identify them and connect them with services. But at the same time, the commitment is greater than ever to the suppression efforts to get drug dealers and violent criminals out of the neighborhoods of this city. And those efforts are paying off and we are getting those people out. And um, I, I think you can clearly see that we have more than doubled the number of annual drug raids uh, over the past five years. Well, those drug raids are part of an overall strategy to reduce gun violence because quite often we know we're going to find guns where the drugs are. Uh, and at the same token, by being able to share resources and intelligence uh, with our county, state, and federal partners, uh, we can identify the most violent criminals in the city and make them a target for investigation, arrest, and prosecution. So from the local level, we truly appreciate the great uh, collaboration and work and relationships that we have with the district attorney, the sheriff, the state troopers assigned to the district attorney, and the U.S. attorney and all of our federal law enforcement uh, partners. And uh, with this additional funding, uh, we'll be able to continue to expand those efforts and continue to send a clear message that there are no place, there is no place in the neighborhoods of this city for illegal guns or illicit drugs. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, great. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Of course, if not, I want to thank you all for coming today, and, and we should understand that we're going to continue to work together and make a real difference here in the city and the county of Plymouth. So thank you all for coming today. Appreciate it. <laughs>
where we planted our 10,000th tree. And that was in about three years' time. And the governor, who's a big, tall guy, he's about six foot six, looked over at me, and I looked up at him like this. And uh, he said, Commissioner, we want you to plant another 10,000 trees as fast as you can. And so we've risen to the challenge, and with the great staff at the DCR, we're trying to do just that. And we've got a wonderful partner here in the city of Brockton. Uh, we've had a great program going here for the last couple of years. We've got another, more, another year left to go in the, in the program. And the difference that we're making in this community uh, won't be felt so much this year or next year. But as you guys get, get older and maybe have kids of your own in 15 years, in 20 years, these trees that are fairly small today will be very tall and have wonderful crowns, those big collection of leaves at the top. And that's where the trees provide the greatest benefit to all of us. There's an old saying that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. And the reason for that is it provides the benefits, right? So the best time, and they say the second best time to plant a tree is today. And that's what we're doing. We can't go back 20 years to plant the trees, but we can plant as many trees today as we can to make a difference uh, for the future. We started this program of Greening the Gateway Cities in, uh, here in Brockton in 2017. So far, we've planted 1,236 trees, and we're on track by the end of the year, the end of our season is, is middle of November, to plant 1,400 trees. Of those, 100 trees have been planted on school property, and 40 at your school right here have been planted, including these American elms uh, that, that are behind me. Uh, Brockton used to have wonderful trees all over the city, elm trees, but they got a disease some years ago and many of them died. And that's why we're trying to return the American elm uh, to, to Brockton. The other significance of planting this tree today is the state tree of Massachusetts is the Elm, did I hear? I think I heard. I think I heard American elm in the background. I'll take it. I'll take it back. Exactly. Exactly right. So we're actually planting uh, the state tree here, but this work does not happen in a vacuum. It takes a partnership, just like the sports teams that you're on. It brings everybody working together. Everybody, of course, watched the Red Sox uh, yeah. win, right? Wasn't that incredible? The thing that struck me about those guys and their success was how much they appreciated each other. When they were coming out from an at-bat, you know, they'd get the high fives and they got the support of their teammates. What struck me about this Red Sox team was how they worked together and how they appreciated the contributions of each other. And I think we all can learn, adults and, and young people can learn a lesson from that because that's what brings about success. And that's what we've had here in the tree planting program in Brockton. We've had great respect and admiration for our partners and a great amount of teamwork. You are so fortunate here in Brockton to have Bill Carpenter as your mayor. He's doing an outstanding job, and I'd like to ask him to say a few words. Oh, where is he? <laughs> Hiding over here. Hiding over here. Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you, Commissioner. And first of all, welcome uh, to the city of Brockton, and it's great to have uh, you and the entire DCI team here with us today. Um, first, you know, this has been a great program for the city of Brockton. As the commissioner mentioned, we're in our second year. Uh, th this program that uh, we were selected to participate in is a three-year program. So, you know, our goal is to make sure that by this time next year, we've planted at least 2,000 new trees in the city of Brockton. And that is an enormous number of trees, particularly if you consider we're only planting in just the south central corridor of the city. Um, I want to be sure to thank our legislators up on Beacon Hill who are also instrumental in helping us to qualify and be selected for this program. Representative Cassidy who's here in the entire legislative delegation. And I want to be sure I mention Matt Dyer also from DCR who's here overseeing the project in the city on a daily basis and has been a great partner for us to work with as a city. I think the Commissioner mentioned a lot of the reasons why this is so important, but you know, I was just recently at a mayor's conference where they actually did a whole presentation to us on urban forests and talking about how critical it is for cities like Brockton 
to be regreening, just what we're doing with this, to be rebuilding our tree canopy. Um, and, and this is a movement in cities across the country. And with this program, we are far ahead of what most cities are doing. But as we're trying to continue to develop Brockton into a livable city with livable neighborhoods where people want to live uh, and people want to come to, re replenishing our supply of trees and building that tree canopy is critical. So it saves us a lot of energy as we rebuild the tree canopy. It helps, it helps us keep inside buildings, help us stay cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter. We became a green community a couple of years ago, and this is one small piece of our overall strategy of being a green community by reducing our energy consumption, reducing our carbon footprint, and these trees that we're planting will help us do that. Uh, and in addition, it makes our neighborhoods more desirable, more livable. As the commissioner mentioned, it helps reduce pollution from cleaning the air to cleaning the water to even reducing noise pollution because sometimes cities can be noisy places to live. And as we rebuild that tree canopy, they, they help to soften the noise also. So this is just a great program as we continue to move Brockton forward. I thought this was an outstanding opportunity for us to plant the ceremonial thousandth tree here at the school to really create a, a, a teaching moment here for the students to have a chance to understand just how important trees are to the quality of life here in the city of Brockton. So uh, to the governor and the administration, you Mr. Commissioner, thank you so much uh, for selecting Brockton to participate in this great program. And for folks, families that live in this part of the city, picture the south side of the city towards the center. We still have a whole nother year of planting trees next year, so any homeowner, business owner, property owner can qualify to have the DCR come in and plant a free tree for you in your property. So please just reach out to us and let us know if you'd like to get on the list for the spring plantings. We'll be happy to get you lined up and, and make arrangements to be planting a new tree in your yard or next to your business next year. So thank you so much and thanks to everyone that's here. Okay, now I need the kids to count really loudly, one, two, three, and then we'll throw the, the dirt. Are you ready? <laughs> one, two, three! Yay!